Today we're assembling an Uluchan 13 basic hole kit. So this is a Devlin Uluchan 13. It has a length of 13 feet 2 inches. It has a beam of 5 feet 7 inches and has a total load bearing capacity of 764 pounds. The dry hull should weigh about 275 pounds when completed and it accepts up to a 30 horsepower outboard, although I think uh, 20 horse is pretty much recommended. At 30 horsepower, it should be able to achieve a speed of something around 30 miles an hour, which is quite a lot for a 13 foot open skip. So this particular version that we've put together here today is a, uh, a bridge deck version. So there's a lockable storage uh, midships plus two seats on either side. The Ula Chan uh, is actually a variation on the Candlefish line of boats of Sam's. The name Ula Chan is actually the Salish word for candlefish. So that's what that came from. Fantastic little boat. The next boat that I build for myself is going to be one of these. So let's get started. Okay, the big day is here. Your boat kit has arrived. It showed up on a four foot wide by eight foot long pallet weighing about 600 pounds. Uh, the top several sheets, top four sheets are uh, OSB material uh, and this is the construction jig. So the construction jig consists of two long longitudinals which are eight feet long. Two short longitudinals, which this corner cut off is the is the bow. Four feet. The deep slot fits into the bottom edge of the longitudinal to hold the longitudinals up vertically. Next, we've got four floor sections and two short floor sections. The last OSB sheet is a temporary longitudinal that we'll um, explain later in the video here. But the point of this is to help the, help the bulkheads um, remain vertical when you're installing things. And the very last thing is these uh, cross member sticks and we'll show you those in a moment. One other thing you'll need, it's uh, mentioned in the assembly instruction, is you'll need two 10 foot long 2 by 4s uh, To scale, these are more like 12 feet long, but they're representative. Anything between 12 and 10 and 14 feet is probably fine. We're going to start by assembling the long longitudinals. These joined together as you'd infer from the puzzle joints. Now I'm going to be using hot glue here, but uh, in the real boat you can either put a butt block across here or use epoxy glue or anything that just um, holds it together because these are just temporary. So my adhesive is set up. The next step is to put the cross members, the feet, into this longitudinal. Now this is a little bit tricky, particularly if you're working by yourself. So what I do is, while holding the longitudinal upside down, put the feet in. So this is all upside down. Then place one of the 2x4s in the slot that's provided in the feet. Then turn the whole works right side up. Now it's a freestanding structure and you can put the other longitudinal in place without a lot of headache. 
See how the whole works is standing up. We can slide our second two by four. So it's freestanding now, but it can still move like this. So that's one of the purposes of these floors. So the floors have these little tabs that fit into slots in the feet. Now the short floors also have these tabs and they go in the middle, leaving a gap for you to stand when you're later in the build if you need to get inside there to uh, glue up the bulkheads. Okay, that more or less secures the thing from uh, wiggling. So there's still, because OSB is a little bit of a flexible material, there's still some um, ability for it to move back and forth. But two things are going to secure that. The first is that the bulkheads are going to hold these, um, hold these two longitudinals parallel. But also we have these diagonal cross braces that fit in here. And I know you can't see this very well. I'll pick up the camera in just a moment and uh, show you what this sort of finished finished assembly jig, construction jig looks like. Okay, now I'm going to pick up the camera and show you what this looks like. So here's the finished construction jig. You can see how the cross braces stabilize the whole structure and the floors keep it from racking. And the long two by fours help to support the floors and to keep the long longitudinals straight. Next, we're going to glue this temporary longitudinal together. So it consists of one, um, I think this is roughly eight feet long, and a three foot long piece. And again, I'm just using hot glue. You can use whatever is useful to you. It's just temporary. So you'll see on this, on this model, I've engraved aft on this end, but this, this beveled end, the end that is not square, goes up against the transom. So if this is the bow, then the transom would be back here. So let's just lay this in here for now. The next step is to start installing bulkheads. Again, back to the pallet. Each of the bulkheads is marked in Sharpie for their location. So this is the bow, so this would be bulkhead number one. This is the stern transom, so bulkhead two, three, and four. So after the stack here, I'm pulling bulkhead number four. Goes in here like this. And we can set this temporarily so you can kind of get an idea how that fits together. Here's bulkhead three. Now on the Ula Chan, all of the bulkheads are omnidirectional, so uh, there's no port, port and starboard on the bulkheads. Some, some um, boat designs will have, uh, the, the, the bulkheads may be asymmetrical, but that's not the case here on the Ula Chan. Bulkhead two. Place it down in the slots, both in the longitudinal and the temporary longitudinal. I'll explain what those parts are in a moment. Here's bulkhead number one. Now bulkhead number one doesn't actually attach to the temporary longitudinal other than some screws if you wish to attach this bulkhead into this temporary piece here. Uh, remember to put these screws, if you do attach them with screws, in a place that'll be accessible when you, when you turn the boat over because you'll need to remove those screws in order to remove this temporary longitudinal. Okay, let's 
hold this fixture up into place in the corresponding slots. And again with the hot glue, super handy stuff when you need to work on a in front of a camera. Okay, again I'm going to come pick you up and show you around and see what we've got here. So here it is with the construction jig and all of the bulkheads erected. So as you can imagine, this saves a person a fair amount of time and effort and, and possibility of mistakes compared to making a construction frame, a ladder frame, uh, out of construction materials. You can know for sure that all of these bulkheads are in their correct spacing, their correct orientation. They are vertical and parallel. So next we're going to look at the transom. So the transom is laminated out of two 12 millimeter thicknesses of material to yield a one inch thick transom. Now there's a notch on the back of the construction jig to sort of support that transom. And then the back edge of the temporary longitudinal has a appropriate angle to get the transom at the sort of angle that we're looking for. So the remaining 12 millimeter pieces are a little less obvious as to what they are. Th this is two sections of the bridge deck. So this is the deck that goes across the hull. These pieces are the vertical parts of the of the seats on, on either side of the boat. There's there's a seat. Uh, these are the vertical components of that. These are the horizontal components. This notch um, aligns with bulkhead three. No, yeah, bulkhead three. So now that we have all of the bulkheads squared away in the construction jig, and I forgot to mention earlier that uh, before you get to this point, you should coat each of the bulkheads with epoxy. Uh, much easier to do it when the bulkheads are laying flat on the on your shop floor than it is to wait until you have them uh, installed in the boat. So, so off camera I took the liberty of taking the hull panels out of the kit and laying them out on my my shop floor, air quotes in their proper orientation. So the skinniest of the three panels is the shear panel. Uh, the middle one is the middle and of course the bottom is obvious which is the bottom. So our next step is to mix up some epoxy and coat those uh, puzzle joints so that everything will stay put when we put it on the hull. So again off camera I've mixed up a tiny bit of two part epoxy. This is actually moss epoxy. Uh, which is a two to one mix with uh, a few grams of uh, fast hardener because my shop is, is relatively cool today. So make sure you mix it up good. When, when you're doing this on a full size boat, you're obviously going to be mixing larger batches of this stuff. And what is a, a good trick to make sure that you have a good consistent mix is to transfer the stuff from one cup to another midway through your your mixing process. Uh, there's such a tiny amount here that a, a lot would be lost in changing cups. So I'm not going to do that. But uh, mix it thoroughly. Uh, if you're using, uh, if you're working in warm weather or if you're using fast epoxy, you're going to have to be careful that it doesn't kick and go off on you before you're ready. Uh, in our case here, we're going to be filling the gaps between the panels with the epoxy. So we're going to use a little bit of wood flour to thicken it up. And it doesn't need to be super thick for the purposes of what we're doing here. It doesn't need to be like peanut butter, but something more like mayonnaise, I suppose, is a good consistency for, for 
for gluing, gluing these panels together. Uh, later in the process, we're going to talk about filleting the panels, the interface between the panels and the, uh, and the bulkheads. And in that case, you are going to want something that's fairly thick so that it'll stay put when you, as it goes off, as it sets, as it cures. Now I have to work a little bit fast here because, I, like I said, this is uh, fast set epoxy. So I'm going to move you over to my other bench where I've set the panels up to minimize the amount of glue that gets on my good workbench. I'm just using a acid brush and we're going to paint paint this joint. Now something that's probably not obvious from what you're looking at right there is that I've backed each of these joints with a piece of tape to prevent the glue from leaking out through the joint. On the full size boat you'll want to coat and this is described in the assembly instruction you'll want to coat each edge before you put them together and before you apply that tape. But in the case we're working at here, uh, we've got such tiny gaps on these laser cut pieces that I'm just going to paint right on the surface and the glue will um, seep into the joint. So something that is worth noting here is that when I set these panels up to cure, I'm laying them atop one another so that I know that the sides are exact mirror images of one another, that the panels are identical. Uh, although these joints are all cut on a CNC machine, uh, a tiny bit of uh, misalignment alignment and, and gap can, can creep its way in during the assembly process. So in order to keep both of the sides of the boats uh, exactly the same, uh, it's it's useful to clamp or weight these things down uh, atop one another. You can see I've just separated the two joints with a bit of tape so that so that they'll come apart when the when it's time to take them apart. Okay, so here we are. It's the next day. The whole panels have all glued up. The, the epoxy has cured just fine. So the next step is to bevel the sides of the whole panels. So let's let's um, look at this as an example. So so this is the bottom of the boat, and so the edge on the top here is the keel. When you lay the panels out on the on the bulkheads, these edges, these inside edges are going to have to be beveled or else you'll have to fill that whole gap. And it doesn't look like very much here at quarter scale, but it's a significant amount of epoxy if uh, you're doing it in full scale. So what we have to do is we have to bevel each of these edges that interface with the next panel uh, with either a block plane or a power plane or a chamfering router bit. So, and that applies to the bottom panel, to the intermediate panel, and also to the uh, lower edge of the shear panel. So I just use a block plane. You can use a router bit if you prefer, but it's simply like this. So arbitrarily I've picked this surface as the inside of the boat. So it's the inside, um, the inside edges of the of the whole panels that all need to be chamfered. Now I'm only removing about half the material thickness. So, uh, in the case of the Ulachan, the bottom panels are nine millimeters. So you want to want to remove four and a half millimeters uh, uh, of material. So it's a four and a half millimeter chamfer. So what I'm using on this quarter scale boat is, is uh, um, aviation safety wire. On a real boat, on a full-size boat, we've, what we have found that works well is steel, not aluminum, but steel um, baling wire. So when you go to drill the holes for the stitches, it makes sense to do the, whole, the sides at the same time so that you can drill through both and keep them both lined up, particularly here at the keel. 
you know, up here at the bow, it makes sense to have um, some extra, the holes uh, spaced fairly closely together because there's a fair amount of tension up in the bow when you stitch it together. But along the keel, in the straight runs like this, you can have them pretty far apart. It's a, anything less than a foot on these straight runs is probably okay. At scale, this is probably something about like six inches. Now obviously when you go to drill the holes in the intermediate shear, in the intermediate panel, you're going to have to take some care to line them up. All right, so uh, on our finished boat, this is the keel, this is the first chine, obviously this is the bow. So these intermediate panels start here and when it's developed, uh, the transom will uh, approximately line up with the with the end of the bottom panel. So again, we're going to drill these in pairs so that we can keep everything lined up. Now again, you don't have to be absolutely precise here. This is not rocket surgery. Okay, here we are. So the holes have all been drilled. Um, here in the straight runs of the chines, I spaced the holes out, you know, up to a, up to a foot. I, I call it maybe six to nine inches is probably good. I've probably got more, in fact, I'm confident that I have more stitches in this than is strictly necessary, but it's okay. There's always fast forward on the video. Okay, here we are again back on our shop floor with our construction jig with all the bulkheads erected in it. And our first step is to, again, with the chamfers, chamfered edges in, we're going to start stitching our hole together. Okay, so there's the keel. It's loosely stitched, laying in place. The next step is either to begin tightening these wires or to begin laying on the side panels. I think in this case, in my case, I want to tighten up these stitches somewhat so that I can snip them off and have less, um, less opportunities for injury. Now what I find works really well for this process is a pair of these inexpensive um, safety wire pliers. They can be purchased at uh, Harbor Freight or a number of different places online. So I've zoomed in a little bit here, so hopefully you can see this a little better. These pliers 
Just grab the end of the wire. There's a lock that holds the handles shut. And then you simply pull up on the knob. Now at this point, I still don't want these stitches super tight because I'm going to be doing some adjusting. So now it's time to attach the intermediate side panels. I'm going to start on your side here, so hopefully you'll be able to see over my shoulder. I'm going to pause this here and I'll bring you back as soon as we have the, uh, as soon as we start really tightening up stitches. Okay, so here we are back again. As you can see, we've stitched up the side panels and the bottom. Now, the hull panel hasn't been shifted forward into place relative to the transom, but I wanted to show you this sort of interim step to see that when the panels begin to be stitched together, it's, it's like Sam Devlin describes this as reassembling a banana from the peels. So now the hull is all stitched together and it's resting on the bulkheads. But the boat's going to need to be pulled down. The hull is going to need to be pulled down against the bulkheads to make a proper fit between the top surfaces of the, or the bottom surfaces, I guess, of the bulkheads and the inside of the hull. So because it takes a fair amount of tension to pull the hull down against the bulkheads, I recommend using some cargo straps. I've got three pieces of twine here, here to represent the cargo straps. And also I recommend fastening the transom to the, hull, the, this, the shear panel as you're pulling the hull down against the bulkheads. And the reason for that is the, as you tension those straps, the hull panels will want to pull the boat forward and you won't have enough room to fasten the transom to the, to the side panels. So if you temporarily fasten the transom first, you'll, that transom will help to pull the hull aft to its proper location. Now, due to the magic of quarter size model making, we can invert the whole boat assembly and show what the whole works is uh, like inside. So, again, I'm going to pick you up and show you what I'm talking about. So, if you've tensioned your straps correctly, and again, obviously, in real life, you'd be working upside down here, looking up into your hull. The bulkheads are pulled down, tensioned down tightly against the hull, uh, which is particularly uh, important up here at the bow. It takes a lot of tension to pull this the hull panel down tightly against bulkhead number one. So our next step is to start uh, fastening the bulkheads to the hull panel. Now to do that, I'm going to mix up some thickened epoxy, just like we did before, except uh, this time, instead of doing it at sort of mayonnaise consistency, uh, like we used when we fastened the puzzle, puzzle joints together, 
I'm going to mix it up more like peanut butter. And we're going to uh, fill up the interfaces between all of the bulkheads and the hull panels. Now hopefully you can see well enough what I'm doing here, but this is very close to peanut butter thickness. It may be, uh, could stand a tiny bit more wood flour, but this is pretty close, good enough for our, for our needs here. So now I'm going to apply, I've got, in, in real life you'd want to use probably nothing much larger than a tongue depressor. This is a popsicle stick, so I don't know what the radius on this is. It's probably a quarter of an inch. Uh, in real life, you probably don't want a fillet that's more than, oh, three quarters to, to one inch in radius. Uh, it's easy to, to put way too much on. And it's just it's not unnecessary and requires a lot of sanding. Again, in real life, you'd be working upside down here which is admittedly not the easiest thing in the world. So I've taken a first pass, I've filleted the easily accessible interfaces, or at least I did until my epoxy started to cure in the cup, which is a common pitfall, happens to all of us. But once the epoxy starts to go off, don't, don't rush. Just Right. Let work what you've done. Then mix some more and go back again. So now we have um, attached, glued the bulkheads to the hull panels and the hull panels together at the chines, as indicated in Sam's plans and on the assembly instruction that we received with the kit. Uh, at this point. We would re remove the remove the temporary longitudinal, and something I didn't mention earlier in in the video, but I should mention now, is you notice all these dotted lines. These dotted lines essentially exist in the full size boat as well, and what they reflect is where you will need to cut these bulkheads out uh, to to finish construction. The purpose of this extra material on the basic bulkhead is to provide provisions for attaching the bulkheads and locating the bulkheads on this construction jig. So once you've rolled the boat over, as we just have, these provisions are no longer necessary. So the parts that we mentioned earlier of the bridge deck. This bridge deck goes between bulkheads two and three. The side seats sit on top of bulkhead four between bulkhead between bulkhead three and the transit allowing the pilot a place to sit. So I hope you've enjoyed this process. It's been a lot of fun for me. Um, now I'm excited to build one of these in full size for myself. Thanks for watching.